In this tutorial, I'm going to go over inf engine information on the Grand Rapids Horizon EFIS. Here we can see the engine page, which you can get to by pressing the uh, third button from the left on the uh, soft key menu. And as you can see, we've got information in terms of things like RPM and power and manifold pressure, etc. One of the first things we're going to do is start off at the top left, and we'll see that we've got this fuel total bar. And that's essentially all the fuel in the aircraft for all the tanks. And the way you uh, set this value is at the beginning of the flight, you're going to fuel the aircraft. Or if you're going to just continue with whatever fuel you have, you're going to accurately measure what's the current fuel status in the airplane. And then you're going to set this indicator to that value. And this can be accomplished by first pressing this radial button and we'll see we've got now the uh, fuel uh, tab over here and we've got OK and then there's two numbers and we can go to adjust if we go down and then if we hit the adjust button it now slides over and we can see it says 17.1 which corresponds to the value here and if I were to uh, turn the knob the value would increase or decrease the level and so you can see that that level was going up and down and the reason why it's jumping back up to 17.1 is because I'm back driving it through the computer and so whatever change I make here essentially gets overridden by the computer which is adjusting these values so in the real aircraft this would change and stay to what you set it to now this works uh, exactly the same way as the Garmin system does uh, if you recall in my Garmin tutorial, at the start of the flight you had to also enter in the amount of fuel in the tank uh, before you set off in your flight. And essentially what that does is the aircraft has a fuel flow meter which is uh, attached to the fuel line of the engine and it's measuring the fuel flow rate to the engine. And it's essentially adding up or accumulating that rate over time and essentially it's doing a running sum total of how much fuel you've burned and it's subtracting that value from the initial value that you told it which we just did right now and I'll hit enter to accept that value that we just entered right now it's subtracting from that value that initial value over time to see how much fuels remaining now Another option that you can have is if you have fuel probes in your tanks and you can have a left, right, and center tank, um, you can also have three, up to three additional uh, bar graphs on the side here which shows you the left, right, and center tank uh, values. Now, there's one subtle but important fundamental difference between the values that you would get from the left, right, and center tank and the value from the fuel total. The fuel total value comes from the measurement we made at the start of the flight. And the fuel is reduced from the fuel total by subtracting out how much fuel you've burned. This is a calculated value. The values for the tanks are measured by a tank level sensor which measures how much fuel is in the tank. So the left, right, and center tanks are measured values, the fuel total is a calculated value and in theory if you add up the values from the tanks left right and center it should add up to the fuel total if it doesn't something's wrong and so Grand Rapids was very clever to uh, utilize this fact and what they do is if you have the fuel tanks for left right and center it'll add each of them up and that should add up to this value that you got from the calculation. And what they'll do is put a little magenta dot on the for to indicate rather the the level, and it should line up with the top of this green bar as it's going down over time, so that the amount of fuel in the left, right, and center tanks is always staying consistent with the amount of fuel you've burned over time. So the question is, when can that differ? let's say you've got a hole in one of your fuel tanks maybe a fitting or a gasket or a seal went bad and now it's been leaking a substantial amount of fuel out of that tank 
what you're going to find is the tank that's leaking is going to start to go down very, very rapidly. And you'll notice that this starts to go down and you can set some sort of warning indicator if it gets to a certain level. But what's going to happen here is your fuel total is not going to show that drastic change. And the reason why it's not going to show that drastic change is because the fuel total only knows how much fuel you started with and it's only subtracted how much fuel you've burned because it's gone through the fuel flow meter on its way to the fuel line to the engine. If it's leaking out of the tank, that leaking fuel never goes through the fuel flow meter, which is up in the front near the engine, and so it has no way of knowing that fuel is leaking out of the airplane. So what you'll see is the uh, magenta dot will start going down very, very quickly, but the fuel total value will not be going down quickly, and that indicates to you right away that you've got a major leak in your system. So that's a very clever thing they've done and I really, really like that. Now next to this we can fuel total bar, we can also see we've got some information and we can uh, reconfigure what information goes here, but we've got outside air temperature, carburetor temperature, fuel pressure, NPSI, fuel flow, we've got endurance, and we've got range. Next to it we've got trim values, so here we can see the elevator, aileron, and rudder trim. And then here we have, uh, I've currently got six bars, but you can configure up to six of them, so two more can go here. And they're also configurable to what you want to show, and I happen to be showing right now oil pressure, oil temperature, the engine information system, or EIS voltage, the EFIS voltage. Below that we've got two persistent value boxes. This one is miles per gallon, and this one is, I believe, the decision altitude. And Again, you can reconfigure what variables you deem important to show here. Up at the top, we've got a, a timer. We've also got the flap extension and retraction indicator. We've got two persistent radial gauges. Those will always be here, but you can configure what you want these uh, two gauges to show. Right now, I'm using the default for manifold pressure and also for RPM. And I've gone in and customized the regions that I want to show for green and yellow and red because it's nice and robust in that way. And then on this particular page, I've got two more gauges over here and two kind of time graphs down there. And this whole quadrant can be changed to six different displays. So the next display that we can do is we can hit any key to get the menu. And then if I hit next, I'll see here data, and that shows me the list. And if I go to the first one, it's temperatures. And here I can see now I've got cylinder head temperatures for all four. I'm assuming a four-cylinder engine. And I've got exhaust gas temperatures, again for all four. And notice my trim and flap values moved over here and this graph has stayed the same as before. So now let's go to the next page. It's well, This one is for the EGT. Now you can see I have a nice graph for the exhaust gas temperature and I've got another bar chart stylized graph for the exhaust gas temperature. And the four different cylinders are in different colors. Let me see if I can uh, run the simulator a little bit. Maybe we can see the exhaust gas temperature change. So here you can see it's starting to uh, rise up as I'm increasing the throttle. And normally you would have uh, one graph that's color coded for each of the different cylinders. So you see uh, four lines over here. Now one of the things we can also do is go to the lean mode and what that will do is it'll put a white box around the here we go there's the white and green boxes the white box is the first uh, cylinder to uh, or the first cylinder to reach the uh, temperature for I believe it's peak of lean and then the green is the last cylinder that will reach that temperature and another thing you can do is hit the norm button and once you hit the norm button, it now looks at the temperatures relative to uh, the temperature at the point at which you hit the norm button. And these will be plus or minus in relation to the first temperature that reached the peak value. So it'll be either above or below peak. Right now all the cylinders are the same because of the limitations of the simulation I'm running. So you can see they're all the same value. But normally they would be plus or minus and I can turn that off 
and then that goes back to showing the overall temperature of the exhaust gas for each of, each of the cylinders. The next page we can go to is the history page. And so that just shows us two time histories of the cylinder temperature and the exhaust gas temperature. Right now I believe I do not have the cylinder head temperature shown on from the simulator, but you'd see a graph just the same. And what we can do is uh, we can click on the right knob and that will select the time scale. So right now we're looking at a 120 second window. So let's say I want to narrow that window. If I rotate the knob, here's 240 seconds. So I've zoomed out the most possible. And if I zoom in, I can go to 30 second window. Now we can go to the next page, which is the uh, bars page. So right now you won't see anything because I don't have any options configured in the setup. But what you could do is you could have more of these bar charts going all across the screen over here. And just like before, you can specify whatever chart you want. So very simple and easy to use. Next we've got some statistics. We've got things like miles per gallon, ground speed, average fuel flow, the amount of fuel used. Uh, we've got the uh, time. We've got the oil hours, average speed, average ground speed, air miles, specific fuel consumption. Uh, average miles per gallon and the decision altitude and then we've got our two uh, charts down here and finally we go back to the page where we've got our two dials and we saw that one before already so now I'm going to show you guys how can we get to the setup page to kind of configure this to uh, what we want to see all you got to do is hit the menu keep hitting next until you get to set menu then you hit that button and to no surprise you're going to care about the one that says graphical engine display and the one below it that says engine limits that will correspond to the engine data pages so we just hit that one and now as I rotate the knob you'll see that we've got all the information over here and this one says dial one manifold pressure and that was the first uh, dial over here and I can set the values or if I click on it I can rotate it and change it to fuel flow or anything else I happen to want to show I'll leave it at manifold pressure and as I go down here's the same thing for dial 2 and dial 3 dial 4 basically all the variables that you could possibly want are all over here And so these are the split boxes, these are the bar graphs, and you can see right now I've got uh, A1 through A4 when I showed you those four graphs. All the other stuff here is turned off, but you could turn it on and specify what channel you wanted to show. So let's go back, we'll hit the main page, and go down one, go to engine limits. Here we can see more things that we're displaying for the engine limits like maximum and minimum temperatures and pressures, etc. Now if we go to the very bottom, the second one from the bottom we see engine performance and if we click on that, we'll see here we can put the total rated horsepower at sea level and then we can put a chart. Here we have RPM and then we have 55 and 75 percent power and the corresponding manifold pressures and this allows for the calculation of percent power on the percent power radial button or excuse me, radial dial these are all based on sea level and then we've got a correction factor here for changes in altitude and delta horsepower and that makes a correction to these which are based on uh, standard temperature and pressure at sea level and if we go back and then go to the very last one we see fuel data scale if I click on that here you can see now where we put in the left center and right tank and we can put the probe measurement reading and then the actual tank value that corresponds to it so that's our mapping and then once you have these values set in you'll see the three you'll see up to three additional bar graphs next to the fuel totalizer corresponding to the left right and center tank respectively so let's get out of here I don't want to save changes go back to the engine page and here you can see that was that percent power gauge and so as I adjust the throttle you can see that percent power is moving and that's because we've configured it in that page and you will not see this move until you give it that table and don't forget to give it the horsepower otherwise this won't work uh, so you need 
the total static horsepower of the motor and you also need the manifold pressures that you usually get from the POH. So that's all there is to it.